Taurus, welcome to your summarized reading for 2020. Yes, it's an annual reading. And let me say, a lot of change going on. <laughs> I think there's going to be times this year when you're questioning, is, is this happening? Is this, you know, I don't know if I like this. Where is this going? Uh, and I'm seeing a lot of that with the fixed signs, by the way. But guess what? The good news is that this is leading you to abundance. That is something that has come up repeatedly, especially I see in the second half of this year, you know, you get the Empress card here and Empress card over here. So you're getting progress and definite growth. And I really see the second half of this year being super positive in terms of getting progress and growth but i think coming into this year things are kind of on hold all right and it looks a little dicey uh definitely you know march april time frame but man by the time you get into uh may and june bingo all systems go and it might be a timing issue is going on and then i see from really may onward this is looking really good for you and you close out the year with some stability and security that you might have felt was a bit amiss throughout this year a lot of because of all the changes going on which we as fixed signs don't like right you're a fixed sign and to top it off you are an earth sign earth signs do not like you know things being unstable and unsteady and not secure all right so I think of all the signs in the zodiac, this is going to be the hardest on you to manage this feeling this year of change and instability. Although in some respect, these are changes that you want and that are very faded and blessed. There's a, an unstable quality to the energy that can make you feel a little a bit unrest uh, this year. And particularly in terms of romantic relationships, it could be very status quo. I'm seeing this a lot for the fixed signs that if you come into this year single, it's very likely you will come out of this year single. And it's not that you won't have prospects. You will. Okay. But I just don't really see people staying the course. Now, I do see a major shift with this occurring October 23rd um, with the cards and with the energy where, you know, the first part of this year, if you're single and wanting a, a more serious, committed love, definitely from October onward and getting into the next year, you could see something really shift with that. But if you are in a marriage that has been on the rocks, I got to tell you that, you know, it's going to be a test of love and really whatever you decide to invest in, be careful, okay, because Saturn is going to be in the seventh house next year, 2021. And that's about karma. It's about getting that payoff for what you put into it. Some of you, if you're in a difficult marriage this year, yeah, a lot of tests. And it might have to do with somebody not giving their attention to a relationship. And I did see a bit of that where, yeah, by November, if not coming into this year, there could be a breakup. Because I could see in January, some of you are not getting or giving a commitment might involve a Scorpio or, you know, a Cancer or a Sagittarius, but I'm seeing somebody definitely need to balance things out and heal and it's separation, okay? It's a transition where somebody's got to get a new perspective. It can be very emotionally intense and realizing they need to get on and get a new partner in life. Also, be aware if you're watching this in October, November, or December, Watch your finances because I'm seeing in January, some of you ha don't quite have it under control. Um, by February, you are definitely getting some blessing coming in. Changes are already being seen, but I see you conserving and being frugal and holding back. Some of you, for good reason, because you're saving up for something, okay? This change that you're trying to, and it might be a new home. It might be moving a new home. So you're just, you're saving your money up for that. Okay. But I see in March, some of you are really feeling kind of trapped and it might be self-imposed. I think that there's control issues and it might have to do with a fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, or your passions, your goals and desires in life. I think you're trying to get control 
in a situation, be independent, self-sufficient. And that might again be another reason why there's some kind of holding back so you can main control, maintain some kind of control financially in your situation. I feel like the issue is it's you, you might be losing sleep at night, stressed out about the timing. There's something out of sync or the, it's not yet the proper timing for you to make this move that I see happening more when we get into May, June, July, okay? But maybe you're frustrated because things are not quite lining up just yet. It's a divine timing thing. Now in April, I can see with a liar, cheater, thief card here, seven of air, uh, somebody is maybe being deceptive or disloyal. Um, it can also be that there's an, uh, an equivalent exchange. Someone's taking more than they're giving. It can also be that they're just strategizing uh, something with their finances, trying to negotiate and adapt to changes on a finance financial level. They might be looking at two locations, looking at two different houses, making a move. And I'm also seeing that it could be that a friends are helping and then there's some kind of happiness about friends helping because on one hand, I see there's been some people in your life who have taken advantage of you, but there are other people in your life who are bringing support and that's huge, okay? Because I saw, and by the way, you're being given, I saw that with the Oracle cards, you're being given support and assistance to get abundance this year. It might involve family for some of you with the 10 of earth generations, okay? Um, and I do see by May, you are getting some really good money news having to do with an inheritance or a family or a career and it might involve a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, or this very idealistic, loving type of person. It also might be a very sincere, honest friend or coworker who is helping you uh, bring this, this good news um, forth. And then by June, uh, progress, forward movement, a lot of communication. Some of you on the love front, talking to a lot of people, dating, um, and might involve a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, a very idealistic type of, you know, husband material I'm seeing. And again, if you're in a relationship, there could be uh, you coming into a greater understanding of one another's needs, and, and that's positive. That is positive, like talking a lot, communicating a lot. Some of you traveling during Ju Ju uh, June, I'm sorry, traveling, some of you actually moving because something is coming into manifestation. It might be a direct result of what's going on with your money, possibly property here. I'm seeing property there so, and maybe a new home for some of you. With the Empress, this is divine feminine energy, maybe a mother figure, but definitely growth expansion in your life something is being nurtured maybe with home and family very idealistic dreamy pie in the sky type of feeling during this time frame and again i'm seeing that this has to do with career and generational wealth home and family definitely is a focus during july and then in august you have this wheel of fortune again which spoiler alert i'm going to show you you had that wheel show up um, three times there, 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 and these three different decks. So you definitely have faded change. They're all in the upright too. Faded change in your favor. And notice this is all happening at in the second month of the first half of the year and the second month of the second half of the year. So you kick off these two six month time frames with faded change in your favor. It's really an awesome reading. I mean, yeah, it starts off rough. I'm not going to lie to you. Okay. But spirit is here through these rough times, showing the, you the truth and bringing you the support through friends, family, intuitive downloads to br get you to this breakthrough that I think you're going to start seeing by May. So very lovely. And again, faded change where I think you're working really hard on stuff. Um, to bring about these changes and you are getting order in your life by um, September. It might involve a father figure or a boss, somebody in a leadership role, but uh, could be an Aries, by the way, with both the emperor and the empress, father, mother, father, or Aries. But definitely for some of you, new relationship, new beginning, and that is what is changing for you, but it is definitely a blessing, all right? 
And I can see with this emperor, um, very much involving you, I think, your energy where you're getting control of your finances, you're bringing order where there's been disorder, you are bringing control where there has been chaos, and you're making plans for your future, but I think you're being very cautious about it, Taurus. And you have a lot of cause to celebrate, but I think you might be coming across as maybe cold or indifferent or rigid or not really grateful during this time. And I think it's because you know how hard you've had to work to get to this point. And you you know that feeling of trap that you had to work through and strategize your way through to get to this. You don't take it for granted. And you don't wanna let go of that grip. You know, you're not gonna let this opportunity run through your hands again. You're maintaining some control over the situation. With a lover's card, it might have to do with a partnership, a Gemini for some of you, a very a soul union, possibly involving a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. But I see that in this month, somebody might be apologizing to you. Be careful, though, and it could be a Leo. Be careful, though, because I see some restraint, like either somebody needs to apologize, but they're holding back. They're afraid of doing that. Or they apologize and the other person's holding back and saying, yeah, thanks, but no thanks. I'm not going to let you uh, take it from me anymore. I'm not going to let you violate me anymore. We will not be, you know, taking that risk again, right? So that's a little bit questionable, although I see really for many of you, there's some decision, love decision that you are making in October, not just with the cards, but with the astrology around October 23rd, where there's some shift happening with a love decision that is going to impact you over the long term, over that next following year to come, okay? Now, in November, there with a messenger of air, there's possibly some decisive action taken, possibly involving an air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. But I do see that it's maybe an unexpected message, an inconvenient truth, an uncomfortable truth, where again, it brings this feeling back to you, this eight of air type of feeling like you are trapped, okay? Or feeling like you have to withdraw from this person, uh, because there's some divided loyalties here. There there might, unfortunately, be some kind of cheating scenario, I'm sorry to say. But definitely pain and separation because somebody's had some very risky behavior, very immature behavior. And I think the painful truth might be that you realize there's a core incompatibility that you're not able to solve with this person. They're not going to prioritize you or you, they. And you realize, you know, you've got to separate yourself from this person as uncomfortable as that is, as unwanted of a truth as that is, you do make decisive action to, to respond appropriately. The good news is by the end of this year with four of fire, there's happiness and harmony within your home. And I think you're feeling very stable and secure. Some of you maybe are in a marriage, are in a commitment by the end of the year, or you're finding that. You're finding that. And if you're not, this is support, okay? This is spiritual support and support coming in through friends and family to help you get that stability and security and also that growth with this feminine energy nurturing the home, nurturing the home. It's really positive. And notice that at the foundation, we've got eight of wands here, eight of wands here. So this is a year of progress. A lot of communications possibly involving an Aquarius, a soulmate, friend groups with a lot of the 11th house activity I saw for you guys. But yeah, definitely the stars are aligning for you to bring in wish fulfillment and, and healing. It's a really good card. But um, again, I saw a lot of this air showing up. Aquarius, Libra, Gemini is possibly relevant or this is simply an energy of you making very clear headed decisions. Though I saw with the Oracle cards, Spirit is giving you intuitive downloads as well if you want to know more about the Oracle cards, the divine doors that are opening for you this year and the spiritual support and guidance and protection that you're get, being given from the spirit realm, that's over on Vimeo. But I can see definitely here that um, you've got to receive help, and it is it is there for you, the, the help, the assistance, and the guidance to come into prosperity and abundance, knowing that you are on the right path regarding some aspect of your life. Uh, but maybe you got to take a risk, take a chance to do something new you know, make a change in your life that you've long wanted or wished for. I'm really hoping that you guys find it. And given the astrology and the cards, I really feel very optimistic for you. 
that you will, you will come into abundance, safety and security and stability more so than, you know, you are seeing at the beginning of this year, you will close out this year finding that, okay? If you don't see it just yet, stay encouraged because I see really good stuff unfolding for you as early as May. Hang in there and I'm wishing you guys all the best. If you want to get the in-depth, link will be down below. Be blessed.